Terry, so I, first I want to say I, I respect your opinion. I've been watching your videos a few months. I, I like them. I, I think you're honest. That's my highest uh, praise on the internet. Uh, right or wrong ends up being secondary. So I want you to know that because um, I'm going to make a review on your review of Rise of Planet of the Apes, which I loved. And so let me begin by saying, Terse, you ignorant slut. And it's a Saturday Night Live reference. Um, okay, first of all, uh, let's just go to these clips of your video that I have. So, 108. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I felt it was rather shallow, very light on what I would call hard. I think hard science fiction, he was going to say. He was going to say hard science fiction, a little light on the hard science fiction. I think the most scientific thing that the, was involved in it was uh, saying that it was a biological delivery agent. Oh, really? So I felt that they lost out on that. I mean, it's, it's what made Star Trek so famous was the cycle babble, you know what I mean? Okay, first of all, Star Trek is the softest practically of science fiction. I mean, this, 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 this sci science has dilithium crystals. I mean, what? Star Trek is your idea of hard science and there wasn't enough psychobabble. And you actually used the word psychobabble, Terse. Psychobabble is the preachy, annoying side of Star Trek. It's the soft sci-fi side, uh, the social psych kind of uh, aspect, you know, which is, you know, very soft science fiction. I mean, hard sci-fi is something like the movie Primer. Um, and you're not going to get a lot of psychobabble. I thought one of the good things about this film was that it, done, it didn't do psychobabble. It was not preachy. Even though the movie itself was about cruelty to animals in a lot of respects, it did this where the guy is trying to cure Alzheimer's and he's dealing with his father has Alzheimer's. So it did not preach, oh, mankind should stop doing this. It sort of left it there that, oh, mankind has the reasons it really has to be doing this. It's not just out of cruelty. But a lot of, uh, you know, comfort that gives to people that are enslaved as medical experiments. Oh, people. I think this is what this movie comes down to, the, the real divisiveness, the, the love-hate, or those that say, well, it was a fun movie, but I didn't really like it like you, I love-hate at the same time. Uh, and for most, I think it's going to be a love it or hate it kind of thing, comes down to these issues of can you imagine that an animal has a rich emotional life? And you can't just imagine it's possible because it's been given a drug to make it like a human, you know, because there's animals in here, that, you know, the, the orangutan, before they get this gas, they obviously are have, have a kind of personhood. And if you can't take that kind of thing, if you don't think animals can have rich uh, emotional lives, then it seems a little bit ludicrous. I saw some reviews talking about how it was about nothing. Right. No, it was about the life of a fairly intelligent animal that can spend its whole life as a medical experiment, one of our deepest fears. And it adds to that with the Planet 8 mythology, um, the ability of really understanding that what if someone with just as rich of an intellectual life went through that? It would be terrible like the human experience of it, not just ignorable like our idea of what an animal with no emotional life must feel going through that, which is nothing because they have no emotional life. Here you say that the monkey should have escaped from the laboratory instead of having been raised in a human family, I guess. Of uh, the story I thought was shallow, not thought through, and uh, bullshit basically. Um, it would have been better if the monkey had been in a, say, a private laboratory and, and escaped through that. And, got all the monkeys to escape through the, the private laboratory and, and attack rather I don't know why you say that but it's related to this a giant dog which defending a child bites the neighbour next door and ends up getting taken away and putting up a dog pound where it's cheated badly and eventually helps all the other dogs to escape you know? well it did borrow that theme and that's because people treat animals badly it's an easy theme uh, to get at the heartstrings of people that love animals um, but it was very different in, in a lot of ways, the way it played off of, of, that, um, of that pattern. 
uh, you know, Caesar, first of all, is interested to go explore it. It looks like it might not be such a bad place before you find that they're thrown in the, um, in the prison. Granted, it did use uh, sort of a, a very flat character to be the, you know, cattle prod wielding uh, mean, uh, meaner of the two attendants. But, um, you know, yeah, I think it broke off of that in a lot of ways. For one, uh, the the payoff was not at all like in those movies. You know, the, the dog did not uh, uh, run back to its owner and have its uh, honor cleared somehow uh, while humiliating, uh, you know, the bad characters with pies to the face. And no, it was quite different. It used that element to tell an element uh, from a story you never see in movies like that, which is... Um, a liberation from oppression, an honest-to-goodness, human-styled revolution where one understands the justice and injustice uh, involved. Now here you go, and I think we're getting into something else uh, that, that belies why you didn't enjoy the movie as much as you, you might have. It could be where those crevices that I've been talking about, and I'm just getting infected and become intelligent, only to have a, a very small amount of violence near the end. Yeah, it was not like a regular blockbuster, summer blockbuster, or a summer blockbuster at all. For one, the pace was too slow, and two, there was uh, compassion was an issue. So it wasn't just about pumping people up so that they could watch a lot of violence and feel okay about it. The violence would not have felt okay in such an ambiguous story as that. So, yeah, I'm, it's like you're complaining that it didn't fit the stereotypes you wanted to fit. Not that you minded that it fit some stereotypes, but that they weren't the ones you were evidently hoping for. Uh, I would have preferred a much more hard science, psycho babble and stuff like that, and it, it would have been, you know, a, a real good movie. Um, the fact that you think Star Trek is hard science means that you're using the word in a way totally different from me, and I am a Star Trek fan, especially the original series, um, or perhaps only that. But um, I enjoyed The Next Generation okay, but I haven't seen every episode, and it just doesn't strike me as a classic. Um, but the original Star Trek, and I like that universe, um, but it's not hard sci-fi, and all that preachiness, that, that's not a sign of hard sci-fi. I mean, hard sci-fi is much more morally ambiguous, where the science is very realistic, um, and, and everything else generally is not very clear. Um, and, and really like Stanislaw Lem or something. Well, that's not a good example because he does not use hard science per se, maybe hard math, does that count? Um, but yeah, I think you're also mistaken. The science fiction here, there's a, there's a spectrum, let's say, from Ray Bradbury where the science plays almost no role in that except for that it allows speculation and then there's Isaac Asimov uh, where it plays a big role and then in the middle, you know, there's the Robert Heinleins that wrote stories that were just stories uh, the science uh, allows for the suspension of the disbelief, um, but he puts a few, you know, physics problems that he's actually solved in there. You know, the science in here was like that. It was not bad science. It wasn't just that it was given by a bio biological agent hand-waving. They had a drug to cure Alzheimer's that was delivered through a virus. Why? to deliver a genetic fix into the cells. Viruses infect cells. They don't just run around your body. They get inside cells. So they can bring, and this is a hard medical science thing that's being pursued, they can bring drugs into cells. So if you had a gene therapy where you actually had to change the genes in a cell that's already living, a virus is the way you would deliver it. And it makes sense that you could pass that on to your offspring if the virus is able to infect reproductive cells. What I don't see any problem with that. I thought it was great that they didn't do a Jurassic Park kind of mini presentation to get us on board with their science. Um, it is speculative. It is for the purpose of suspending disbelief so that we can understand this, this world that is to come, this classic world of, of a planet of the apes. So to go into it too much could not have helped that. Okay, And, and again, using the Star Trek example, they go into that stuff a lot and it's all hand-waving, 100%. There's nothing hard about the sci-fi in, in, in Star Trek at all. 
just because it's a shiny white device and an electronic and has a beam scanner in or whatever, you know, they do. There's no attempt in, in Star Trek whatsoever to 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 do any hard sci-fi. There's a nod of respect to the technological achievements and knowledge achievements of science, but there's absolutely no time spent going in and getting that knowledge and making it part of the story or the plot or the structure of the movie. I don't think you have seen no, I mean, it just, in a hundred dog movies. I, I, I just found it, as I say, a tweet. You know, I've seen it in hundreds of dog, dog movies. You no, know? I, I don't think so. And and here's where I think really you were disappointed. The story where all the apes come out and start rampaging. And to be honest with you, they didn't rampage much. Very few humans get killed at, at this point. But that's the story. That's why this was an actually a really good story about revolution, about being driven to killing, but not being by nature a killer. Having mercy, but also killing to defend your freedom and fight for justice if it's necessary or you know unavoidable. And again, very ambiguously, I think in a way that dealt with those much better. I mean, blockbuster movies—they're all about. Just demonizing someone to justify their cruel death. Okay, and this didn't do that, and that is one reason I really love it. Now, this comment I don't get at all. I just hate that it, how movie makers keep falling in the same traps of producing garbage for millions and millions of dollars, you know what I mean? And it Oh, oh I, my note had something. I guess I didn't go back and, and make it fit. You talked about something about a boy meets girl movie. This had no boy meets girl in the movie. Um, it was not central or almost present in the plot. The closest thing is some people have relationships. Um, it, it was not typical in many ways. The monsters were, we were not explaining why they went against man and became bad. Humans were the bad ones, and yet they weren't unambiguously bad or demonized. Humans also are just trying to save their fathers from Alzheimer's and willing to brutalize other animals to do so. And what if the other animals had an opinion? And guess what? I'm someone to think the other animals could have an opinion. Just because they don't have human language, I don't think it's impossible to have an opinion about being treated as a lab animal. I don't think there's any of those animals that are going, oh well, I guess this is just the way it is. I enjoy it as much as anything else. You know, they're not thinking in words at all, but they're definitely not thinking the nonverbal equivalent of that. Not that, 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 that. But actually look at the storyline, look at the dialogue, look at how the story builds, look, look at the, the, the cheap escape. Uh, no. See, I did look at the story. It's an excellent, it's like Spartacus. It's an excellent story. Um, the emotions involved are very well built. I think a lot of people will see it as too slow in the beginning, but everything they did in the beginning built up the character to explain for example if these had all been human characters to explain uh, where the beliefs and actions come from and um, you know you see this thing where he doesn't want to go back with his with the, the doc, with the scientist um, after the scientist finally gets him freed and you might think oh it's because he, he blames him and he hates that guy now no he doesn't hate that guy he had just set everything together and he was setting the stage for his escape and his plots and his desire for freedom and justice and so he was going to keep working on that there so you know the cheap thing would have been thought oh it's just a simple resentment it was nothing simple like that you could see the resentment and slash lack of resentment in the very last scene so um, I, I think you it sounds to me like you're complaining that this didn't give you a cheap escape and to enjoy this movie as much as I did, you would have to think about everything involved, about the way animals are treated, if it has to be so bad, their use in experiments, medical experiments, whether that's necessary, whether it's justifiable. And again, back to the first question, do you really have to treat you know, chimps and lab animals as badly as you do? Let's say you do have to do this for the good of humankind and it's worth it and all of that. Does it, that doesn't mean you have to treat them uh, really badly. You don't have to have something running as a sanctuary that that you know doesn't really give a good situation for the animals there. So I, I think that it didn't give you a cheap escape. 
To enjoy the movie a lot requires thinking about some very non-summer blockbuster issues. So you totally missed the boat on this one. It was an awesome movie. Um, you just didn't enjoy it. All right, cheers.